Okay guys, this is going to be an install video for Daisy Epoch version 1.0.6.2 and the, in the install process has changed a little bit, not much. Uh, there's a couple little things you have to deal with. I'll show you how to do that. Now, first of all, you need to download some stuff. Um, I'll have a link in the description or these links in the description for the stuff you need. You just need to download all of it. So epochmod.com, you need to have, click on the downloads, go to Daisy Epoch. <clears throat> you need uh, client files, which I already downloaded, and the server files. Give me server files, okay. Uh, Heidi SQL installer, download that. And you need this MySQL community server. I stopped using Examp because this is more efficient. It's 64-bit. Since I am using Heidi SQL, I do not need the um, <clears throat> the uh, my the Apache web server. So, click here to download. Um, it says 32-bit here, but it's all of them. I don't, they just made a mistake. This is the offline one. Uh, this one downloads the stuff as you're installing. I just get this one. Click here and save it and you need to create a folder somewhere on your computer I just put it on the desktop call it daisy servers or daisy server whatever and you need to copy the arma2 operation arrowhead files into it so go to where you have your steam installed mine is just here and steam apps common arma2 operation arrowhead you can see I already have Daisy Epoch in there. Open that up. You can check what version you have by Mod CPP. It says Daisy Epoch 1.0.6.2. Verify that you have the right one with that file. Copy all of this shit over. Okay, and then you can start installing your um, MySQL server. Okay, accept, next, server only, next, all right, execute. Next, next, standalone, yep. Uh, this is a server machine. It's defaults, leave them alone, next. Here you put in a password. Um, Make sure this says strong here if you have a public server. Uh, you don't want to have people hacking into your damn database. So make sure this says strong. Use special characters, numbers, uppercase, lower. I'm not going to add a user because I'm going to do that with Heidi SQL. Uh, I like to configure it as a Windows service. Some people don't. They use batch files, but I do it this way. I don't have it start up at system startup. I start it manually, but you can have that checked, if, especially if you have a Deddy box. You want to have that checked so that it starts when the server starts, the actual physical machine. Um, standard count, next. Uh, yep, next. Execute. Okay, so that's installed. Next, finish. So let's go ahead and install Heidi SQL. Run. Except just I just do the default C program files. You can install it anywhere you want. What's that say? Create a start menu. Okay. Um, I I get rid of those. I don't want those. These two I want. Install. Okay. I'm not going to launch it right away. You need to. Um, I like to put pin this to the uh, task bar and then delete this thing so I can launch it from here. Um, I'm going to do, and I got to copy some more files over first. Hold on. So go back into where you had your Arma 2 operation arrowhead, Steam, Steam folder. You need to go to Arma 2. So you should have both Arma 2 and operation arrowhead. 
All you need is the add-ons. You don't need all these other files, just the add-ons. So right click and drag it over. Copy here. That's all you need from there. Now you need to uh, extract your, let me get rid of these. Extract your server files with 7-zip to a folder like that. And we need to have this Daisy Epoch server folder. We need that. Copy that there. I'm going to skip that one. That's the last. That's the new thing. That's And that's confusing people. I've been uh, sent a lot of public uh, mess or private messages about that. Go to keys. Open this up because you have to put the keys in the keys folder here. Open this keys folder up. You got that bi.by key. Copy this epoch one over. If you're using another map other than Shinaris, Nap, or Sourland, here's all the keys for these. Some of them might be outdated. <clears throat> you have to check with the map maker. But most of them, I think, work still. Um, yeah, they should be good. So, uh, missions. Whoop, I need to open this back up. Oh, keep this Daisy servers folder open. So, MP missions, you need to go in here and select what map you want. I, I'm just doing good old Instance 11 Shinaris, so MP Missions, delete. I deleted that README file. You don't need that. Copy this over here. I'm not going to be making any changes on the install, so I'm going to go ahead and turn this into a PBO. If you're making changes, then you would turn it into a PBO afterwards, but basic install, have your PBO manager installed so you get this option to pack it into a PBO, right, and delete this folder. So now you have a PBO here. Um, a word on these other maps, if you're using Namalsk or any of these other maps where they're not part of Arma 2 or the Epoch mod, you have to go and download them and you have to have a copy on both the client and the server. Okay? The easiest place to get them is Daisy Launcher. Let me show you a couple things on that. Um, go into settings and make sure that this mod download path is pointing to your op Arma 2 Operation Arrowhead folder. If it, I think the default is like My Documents. You don't want them in there. You want them in the uh, Arma 2 Operation Arrowhead folder, okay? Make sure it says that. And then go into Mods, and you can download anything you want, right? Lingor, Namalsk, Panthera, Sarani, etc. That's where you get them. That's the easiest way to do it. Just make sure that path is correct. Uh, that's only if you're doing a, a, a map other than you know the ones that are built in which are Nap, Sourland, and Shinaris. And I guess Utez is built in too. Some of these other smaller ones they're just like little villages and stuff. Um, so nobody uses those. What else do we need? Make sure um, the Epoch Dev I Comrade added these Visual Studio C++ redistributables. Make sure you have each one of these installed on your machine. That will show up. Um, what programs? Well, I guess most. If you're not using Windows 10, it'll be Control Panel. Um, programs and features. So right here, redistribute those C++ redistributables. Make sure you have all those installed. And they're all in this folder. You just go through each one. It's just an executable. Make sure all those installed on your machine. You have to have them. Um, we need to have these DLLs. There's four of them. Copy those over. This README has some install stuff in it. Like step four is how to deal with this new folder, the config folder. Uh, if you want to take a look at that. Otherwise, I'm going over that now. Um, So let's deal with uh, oh one other thing if you if you if you're installing this on a machine that you've never run Arma on, it won't have DirectX on it that Arma needs. So there's a folder here. Open that folder up and run this exe uh, dxsetup.exe. Run that on your machine so it installs the DirectX that Arma 2 needs. Okay, accept it and run it. That's only if you haven't run Arma 2 on that machine before. 
So once you got that installed, those installed, let's deal with this folder now. This is the new folder. It doesn't go in here anymore. Uh, there's a common hack out there where they can actually go in and get your Archon password. And that's in BattleEye, BE Server Config, Archon password. Okay. So the instructions here tell, well, where are the instructions? Well, there, yeah, just read me. Um, put it on the root of C or somewhere else. You can put it anywhere you want. I'm going to do it just like the instructions say, though. I'm going to go here, open up uh, your C drive. If you're using D, that's cool, too. You just have to watch for the paths. So copy this over to the root of C. And then open this up. Now you need to choose, I'm using uh, instance 11 Shinaris, these are instance numbers. So I don't need all these other batch and config files, so I'm going to get rid of them. So you, you still have a copy in the downloads, so don't panic, you're not going to lose them. Um, click on that one and then do a shift click here. Delete. I just need these two and then these two files here. So all these other files to, for the other maps, just delete them. So you need these four files, basic config, high vxt.ini, and then the Shinaris config and the Shinaris batch file. And your bat, your um, let's open up the bad life folder first. Go into be server config. This is kind of a new folder that they've added by default. There's some security settings in here. Um, this Archon password. If you're using a remote console, this is the password you would use like Dart or the Infistar one or Battle Metrics. Um, if you're using a public server, make sure this password is complicated and secure. Um, different characters, you know, make it long, make it complicated so people can't steal it, right? But that's the whole point of moving this folder out of the, um, the ARMA directory. Okay, so users, all it does is it tells you your difficulty levels, right? There's recruit, regular, veteran, and mercenary. Mercenary doesn't have third-person view, so it's the hardest. Open uh, this config folder real quick, because you can see there's your difficulty level. It's defaulted to veteran, but you could change it to regular or recruit or mercenary if you wanted. This is where your name, name of your server is. Um, you know, I'm just going to call it mine. This is how it shows up in the server list. So JC's Epoch server. Um, if you're not having a public server, you can turn battle eye off by turning it to zero. Don't turn that off if you're having a, a um, public server where other people can log on. Also, this admin password, that's how they log in to kick and ban. I guess do some other things too. I never use that feature, but change this password. Don't leave it that. Make it complicated so that they can't log into you or hackers can't log into your server. This password here is if you want to make people have the password just to log on to the server. I'm not going to change anything else. Everything else is good. I just wanted to change my server name. Um, let's go into the batch file. Here's where it gets, this is where you need to take a special look at stuff. Okay, so the problem here is that this batch file is trying to load this exe, ARMA2 server, but that's not in this directory. So it's not going to find it. It doesn't have the right directory. So that file is in your DAISY servers folder right here. So you have two options here. You can move this batch file over into here, which is easy, that's fine. Or you can change the directory of this or uh, change the directory to point at this. So if you right click on ARMA2 OA server.exe and go to properties, it gives you location. This is your path to that file. So I'm gonna copy that. I'm gonna 
give myself a space and go CD and then just paste that there and save it now let's verify that it can actually find it so if I double click this it's loading the server it found that exe okay so we're good to go there I'm, I'm not loading any configs or anything so we can shut this down right so it gave me an RPT uh, so just verify that it will actually start your server otherwise you can put this batch file in here and it would not change anything that's fine too why did I run this oh my god I wanted to open it with notepad not run the server okay so that's all you have to do to redirect just so you're pointing at this file right that's easy so <clears throat> here now since this is in a different location you see it's got a path to these files okay this is this 11 shinaris config so if you want to put it in a different drive letter or a different location if you want to rename this folder to something else you know to further increase your security if you want you just have to make sure that this is correct so you right click on this go to properties and make sure did I do that right yeah this is the path you see this C colon forward slash or backslash DZE server config folder that's this make sure this you know that's here matches this if you're going to put it in a different location if you're just going to put it on the C drive you don't have to change anything that's just if you want to put it somewhere else so one thing here we need to do is we need our BE path okay so they the devs forgot to put this in here they did it in the instructions in that readme it's in there but this just follow what I do here okay so click right here we're right in front of that config that double quote and put two double quotes okay and then back up one with the arrow like that and you're gonna go uh, hyphen capital B E and then P A T H lowercase equal sign and then you need to have the path to your battle eye folder this is your battle eye folder go inside of it and right click on one of the files in there and go to properties and there's the path to your battle eye right we want to point to this battle eye folder so copy that I'll back this up and you want to put uh, inside the quotes there's a quote here there's a quote here watch these quotes you want to put a space there okay so this one goes to this one make sure you do these quotes right otherwise you won't read your batch file right or it won't read your config folder or config file rather so we'll paste that in there now we're pointing to this battle eye folder so look make it look exactly like that okay quote all this stuff in here and then quote space here Okay, if you're doing Shinaris, we don't have to, uh, we're just loading these two mods. We're good to go here. Everything is correct. Hope you guys followed that. You can either drop the batch file in there or change directory. I think changing directory is probably a better bet because it already has these paths in there. Just do this simple little change path thing that I did. And I like to put a shortcut on my desktop so I don't have to open the folder to launch it I can just double click here okay why did it oh okay so we need to set up our database so hive ext .ini. edit that I'm not going to change the time. This is where you would change the time from local, custom, or static. That just starts the server at 1, 1 p.m. I'm going to leave that alone. This is default, 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 good. Database, you can call it anything you want. The, the default is Daisy Epoch. Uh, if I have multiple servers, 
I'm going to identify that as Shinaris or, you know, if you have multiple Shinaris, then Shinaris1, something like that, right? Daisy, your, this is your username, password. I'm just going to put uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Don't do that on a public server. Make sure you make this password complicated. Um, it should be like that root password, you know, how it said strong or weak. So everything is default except I changed the database name. You can leave it Daisy Epoch if you want. But we need to go into Heidi SQL and create a new session name. So new and then call it Daisy or Daisy servers. This is default. Uh, this is just pointing to the machine. If you're doing remote administration, you would obviously put the IP address of your machine in and say prompt for credentials. You need to put in our root password and default port. Okay, we're connected to the MySQL server. That's good. We need to create a database. So look at your hivxt.ini. Grab your database name. If it was Daisy Epoch, fine. And you just need to, you know, copy that. Go here to Daisy Servers. Right click, create new database. Paste that in there. I do control C and control V most of the time for pasting. Hit OK. It's made you a database. If you click on it, you see it's highlighted with a green check mark. So anything you do in the query tab will apply to this. So let's do um, this username. You could use root, I guess, but, you know, fuck it. We're going to use what it says there. Um, I, I like to have a separate username for for the control. You don't want to use root, in my opinion. If you, especially if you're using a public server, do not use root. Um, hit add, and you can call this anything you want. This must match this. This is Daisy. Daisy, you can call this anything you want as long as it matches. And we're just doing the administration from the local host. Otherwise, you would do access from anywhere. And then you could uh, do remote administration. So password is this password. You could actually use this generator and get a 30-character password and then type it in there or, or uh, copy it in there if you want. For the demo, I'm just going to do a simple password. Make sure it's a good password, though. Don't fuck around with this. You don't want people breaking in there and fucking with your shit. So we need to add the database to this user to be to be the administrator of this database. So select your database. Hit OK after you hit Add Object. And then click here to give it full rights to administrate that database. And then hit Save. OK, so now we have the DAISY username with the password. Now we need to populate this database. So this has already been saved. Go ahead and close it. You need to go into your downloaded files. Go into the SQL folder. You need to run this one and this one. These two are for not for updating from previous versions. We're doing a fresh install, so just run this one. Go to the Query tab. Make sure this is selected, highlighted in green. Copy it over and hit Run, this blue button up here. Okay. The, the, don't worry about the warnings. That just means it, you know, create table if not exists. Well, it didn't exist, so it's just telling you that. New query tab. Drop this one in there. Run it. Okay, good. Don't worry about the warnings. Okay, so now you should be able to refresh here. And then open this up, and you should see a populated database. You should see tables, uh, functions, events, triggers, whatever they are. And uh, one thing I want to show you, though, open that up. Type this in to a new query. Uh, it doesn't matter where you're selected. It, we're just running this on the general MySQL server. Select space at at event underscore scheduler. Okay, and then run that. You can see the scheduler is off. We don't want that. We want the scheduler to be on. So let's go turn it on, and we'll turn it on so it starts automatically when MySQL 
starts okay so close this hit no when you don't want to save the contents of your query tab so go into um, we're done he no we're well I want to look at well yeah we're done there so go to C Drive or wherever you installed your MySQL server you can see I have a program data folder here that's hidden you need to go into view to see that folder you need to go into view and make sure you have your folder options you need to have this show hidden files folders and drives highlighted if you don't then you don't see it so make sure you have right so you can actually see it the other thing you can do in here is uncheck hide extensions for known file types that's so you can see that's dll that's text file that i like you know that's useful so open up this program data folder and then go into mysql mysql server 5.7 and right click on this my.ini edit with notepad or notepad plus plus You should have that installed, by the way. Go down to, you see this MySQLD header. Not this one, this one. MySQLD. Put your cursor on the end of it, hit enter one time, and then type this. Event underscore scheduler space equals space O-N in caps. Okay? Just like that event scheduler equals on and then save it close it and close this and now you want to go and restart your MySQL server so um, go into your control panel or go into services on Windows 10 go to administrative tools services and scroll down until you find MySQL these are in alphabetical order right and you're gonna restart Okay, it's restarted. Go ahead and reopen your Heidi SQL. Log in as root. And query tab. Type the same thing. Select at at uh, event underscore scheduler. And you can have a semicolon. Don't matter. So now you can see it's on. Scheduler is on. You want that event scheduler on. And if you put it in that my.ini, it will start automatically when you start your server. Good to go. Okay, so we're done with the database. Go ahead and close your, and don't save the contents of that. Okay. I believe... This tool has like database backups and stuff and rotate logs for uh, BattleEye, but I'm not going to do that for a basic install. You can read over the documentation. There's a sample and whatnot. We got these in there. All of that installed. I think, let me go over this real quick and make sure that I've done everything. This is my notes to myself. Oh. One thing you should do, um, you should not be using betas in, uh, what the hell? Library. You should, oh no, it's starting up Armor 2. Okay, well that's fine. Um, you should not be using betas in Arma 2 or Operation Arrowhead. You should be using, oh, feet sick. Okay, where it says betas here, go with, uh, I right-clicked, go to properties, and go to betas. It should say none, opt out of all beta programs here, okay? You should not choose beta or legacy. Same thing with Arma 2 Operation Arrowhead. I don't know if I can... Yeah, it should say none, opt out of all betas. Make sure you do that. That should be done before the install, I forgot. Whatever, fuck it. So you don't use betas. They are releasing a new beta, though. Um, Dwarden, the uh, Bohemia Interactive developer, has been on the Discord for Daisy Epoch talking about it, and I think they're going to release. <clears throat> excuse me, they're going to release it pretty soon. 
and uh, it's going to fix a lot of shit. So looking forward to that. Oh, another thing, if you're using a LAN server, like I'm doing here, it, this install works for LAN servers, dedicated boxes, or on the gaming machine you're doing here. I could install this on a different machine on my LAN. You need to have port 2302, and that's in your batch file. So you see where it says port, it says port 2302. It has to be that for a LAN server. Otherwise, it doesn't matter. If you're doing a remote box, it doesn't matter. Okay, so let me clear my client RPT before I start. You want to start with a fresh RPT. So go into C drive or wherever you, um, what are users? Yeah, my name or name of your computer. Go to app data. That's also a hidden folder. So make sure you have the folders unhidden. Go to local, ARMA 2 OA. This is your client RPT. Just select everything in there and delete it and then save it. Oh, for I got to turn this off. God damn it. Hold on. I might be able to save it once it's... See, the thing is, but Arma, it suspends its loading when you tab out. Let's see if I can... No. Okay, close here. Um... Okay, it allowed me to save that time. Good. It just wouldn't let me do it when I was loading. Okay, so I have a fresh RPT here. I'm going to leave that over here so I can open it. So, I have my client open. Sorry about the noise. Uh, address LAN. Can you see it says port 2302 up here? If you do a remote, and I can put in a, a different one there. Okay. But, do a... Uh, that's internet. These are all the, if you do internet, that's all the servers online. You can, it doesn't break as many up there. Oh, now it's populating. Okay. I'm doing LAN server, so. Um, what? Cancel. server. Okay, LAN. Okay, so I'm going to start my server. Make sure, if you're doing a login like this where you're just logging in from the game, from the client, and not using a batch file or Daisy Launcher, go into Expansions and make sure you have Daisy Epoch 1.0.6.2 enabled. It's green. If it was black like this, then it would not be enabled. You need to have it enabled, okay? So open this up, enable it, and then hit OK, and it'll restart your machine, and it'll be green and enabled. And you go into multiplayer and you go into see my server name is showing up if you have where you start your server and it just shows like um, your your PC name or something then it's not reading your config folder you did something wrong in your batch file so make sure it says that and then hit join and hit OK, or let it time, let it uh, count down, I guess. The first time install, I mean, uh, first time login rather, is a bit rough because it's spawning all kinds of vehicles and shit. Gender select. Okay, so I'm logged in successfully. If you didn't get logged in successfully, you did something wrong during the install. You didn't have the mods in there. You didn't have Daisy Puck Loader or something like that. But it's going to be streaming all kinds of data. So I'm going to let that finish doing its thing. Right? It's loading. This is all vehicles. It's it's publishing this stuff to the database. So I'm just going to run around and game day. Depending on how fast your server is, you know. This is a successful stall of uh, Daisy Epoch. We are loved getting running around. Oh, okay, let's see if we're done. 
looks like we're done streaming data here. Uh, this was just publishing stuff to the database. You want to go into your server where you know that's um, where this config folder was. Just make sure you get this right. So config folder here, and go into your RPT. This is the Arma 2 OA server RPT. Go in the Notepad plus plus and scroll down to the bottom. And you can see all it was doing was publishing vehicles. <clears throat> but I'm going to scroll up and I'm going to look for errors. Player. Okay, this is error free. This is just reading, uh, saying the where, warehouse has struck. Strange convex. Serve. This is not a real server error. Player without identity. That's just because I wasn't logged in all the way. Updating base classes. This is not an error. If you see that, player without identity. Don't worry about that. Strange convex, that's just on a warehouse model. Uh, but there's no errors in there. This is a completely error free install on the server side. Okay. Go to. This is. Uh, that was the server RPT. Go to the client RPT. Remember your computer name, app data, local, Arma 2 OA. Open up this RPT and look for errors here. Non-network object, that's not an error, that's just referring to something that doesn't have an object ID. There are no errors here. See that? After you logged in, there's nothing. There's no errors. I opened this uh, I saved this late, so it didn't show all the loading stuff, but uh, this is after I logged into the server. <clears throat> you can see it. Daisy preload finished reset. There's no errors. This is a completely error-free install, and this is important. If you're going to add um, third-party scripts to your server, do not do it if you have an error server, if you have errors on the server. It'll just be a big, it'll just um, cascade down, and it'll just be a big pile of shit and it'll never run right. You want an error-free server. Uh, I'm not sure what else to tell you. I know some people have commented. I was surprised on my um, my uh, YouTube videos. The Daisy Epoch 1.0.6.1 video has like 2,300 views or, or better. Which I thought was pretty good. People say, "Well, nobody's playing Daisy Epoch anymore," but they are. There's, there's just, they're just not playing on public servers. They're playing on LAN servers and shit. So that's why I'm doing this kind of stuff. Is people want to, you know, they're not tech savvy, so they can't install this stuff without um, instruction. But um, what else was I gonna say? This is a, this is all there is to the install. But I was gonna say something else. I thought, oh, they've um, also the. ZSC is the most popular mod. If you go on epochmod.com and look at the um, view counts, I think ZSC is the most popular. And then after that, it's Wicked AI. I do the Wicked AI updates. If you go into... Uh, if I go into GitHub. This is my GitHub. And I do... This is the overpock one, but I do the... Uh, and then the Epoch admin tools I just released. Um, yeah, here's the regular Wicked AI. But I'm going to do some more install videos. Probably do Wicked AI. If you guys have a special request, just put it in the comments of this video. Um, troubleshooting. If you can't get in, like uh, wait for host or other stuff, you just, you just miss a step in the install. That's all there is to it. It's not a hard install. I, it, it takes me all of 10 minutes if I'm not explaining things to get a working server going. Probably even less than that. But that's it for this video. Uh, comment if you guys want something else. Uh, if you don't understand something, just go ahead and comment. Or go to epochmod.com. I've got stuff on there. Um, but I'll see you guys in the next video.